you're enjoying this beautiful day of May. It, it is May, isn't it? Close enough if it's not. I know I truly enjoyed Ryan's sermon earlier today, as I always do. And if you recall that part about the light and how light illuminates things and how his video quality is better than other people's videos because of the good lighting system, now you know whose videos are not using good lighting. So what I'm hoping is that my poor lighting conditions will help drive home that point that he made earlier. I'm here to help. My thoughts today are focused on quizzes. Now, you know there are a million or so different quizzes out there that you can take that tells you something about who you are. If you need a guide to internet quizzes, just ask either of my daughters. They are experts on the topic. There's one that matches you up to which famous TV or movie celebrity you're most like. Or maybe it tells you which dysfunctional care bear you would be. And then of course there's lots of serious ones too. One they had me take recently was the Enneagram. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right at all, but it was fairly insightful. And it turns out, if you'd like to know, I'm a five. Yeah. What does that mean? You have to read up. There's a lot to it, or you can ask my kids. Again, they're experts. And really, the more I think about it, I don't think this is news. This may have been around for a long time because I'm pretty certain I heard back in high school some girls talking about me, and one of them said, yeah, he's a five. And so now I realize they must have been talking about the Enneagram test. Then there's the Myers-Briggs test, and that's fairly well known. Uh, if you know the stuff about that, I'm on the border of being either an INTP or an ENTP. And what's the difference? Some ways I'm an introvert, others I'm an extrovert. I'm not really sure what determines uh, when I'm one way or the other. It may have something to do with how much caffeine I've had at the time. I'm pretty certain that Ryan is also a big fan of personality quizzes. He's always very introspective and encourages and challenges the rest of our leaders of our congregation to also be that way, to know where our strengths and our talents lie. Not too long ago, he acquired some testing rights to test several of us using the APES test. I think it's about six to eight dollars per person, and depending on the quantity. I, I know what you're thinking. You don't have to have me take a quiz to know that, well, I'm a pest. Uh, but this is different, truly. APEST represents five different areas of spiritual strength, focus, talent, and such not. Uh, APEST, A-P-E-S-T. They represent apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. Now, I'm not speaking today in an attempt to promote this particular test. Truthfully, I even disagree with some of the way the questions are asked or how they're factored into the different groups because it disagrees with how I perceive myself. Now, some of that is because I really need to be more open-minded on how I really am, and some of it is you can't truly identify everything about you in a 43-question quiz. But overall, it was a good insight to kind of see how I fit into different leadership roles. Now, I'm not going to go deeply into any of these, but the basic idea is you take 43 questions. You answer always, sometimes, never. And then you sum up the answers using their fancy score sheet and determine your connection to each of these areas. I'm not sure anyone ever scores a, a perfect score in an area or gets a zero in another. We're all at least a little bit of them, I think, and just more in some areas. And, and that's the point of taking the quiz, is kind of knowing where your areas are that you're stronger in, that's more of you. Now, just a, a quick summary. Like I said, I didn't want to get into the, you know, the finer details, but the apostles, they extend the gospel. They ensure the faith is transmitted from one context to another and from one generation to the next. Prophets know God's will. They are particularly attuned to God and his truth for today. They bring correction and challenge the assumptions we inherit from our culture. Evangelists recruit they are infectious communicators of the gospel message and recruit others to the cause. Shepherds nurture and protect. Caregivers of the community, they focus on the protection and spiritual maturity of God's flock. And teachers understand and explain. Communicators of God's truth and wisdom. Now each area not only has a summation of strengths, but also in areas uh, in ways that they may struggle or have challenges. So. What was my top one? In addition to me being certified as a five, uh, an INTP-ENTP hybrid, and apparently Jim Halpert, 
the APES quiz listed my top area as, can you guess? Anyone? Anyone? If you guess shepherd, because as an elder I am a shepherd, you'd be wrong. Ironically, shepherd is tied for my lowest along with apostle. Now, does that mean I'm not fit to be a shepherd or that I shouldn't be an elder? No, of course not. That's not what this quiz is designed to do or to, to illuminate. In fact, a good leadership would be comprised of different people having areas of strengths in the different areas so that together we all function as one cohesive group uh, balancing out our strengths and our weaknesses. If we were all the same type, our congregation would be in danger. We'd be noticeably deficient in leadership and we would just be dysfunctional. My top category was teacher. And I'm guessing many of you who know me aren't really all that surprised by this. And immediately following that, just one and two points behind, are prophet and evangelist. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Again, I'm not trying to promote this or any particular quiz, although if you're interested, uh, get word to Ryan. I'm sure he'd love to get another group together to explore and investigate their spiritual identity and strengths. It's always good to know yourself better, and that is actually the real focal point of this message. Whether you're using quizzes or just studying and praying, it is very important for you to know who you are and what you're good at. Now, if you think little of yourself or you think you're not good at anything, you're absolutely wrong. You are a child of God, and it's about time you started believing that and acting on that truth. And there are too many people that go about their lives being good Christians, but think that that's really just being sure to attend what you can attend, to give money on a regular basis, and overall, just don't be a jerk. Those are good qualities for sure, but that's not the deep introspection that the Lord expects of us. Through Jesus' ministry, he repeatedly challenges his followers, teaches them, rebukes them, and models them for them to truly know themselves. In Matthew 16, Jesus asked his disciples who other people were saying that he was. And they, they throw out answers, John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, one of the other prophets. And that's an easy question. It's easy because he was asking, what are the other people saying about me? But then he turns and says, what about you? Who do you say I am? Now that's different because that hits a personal level. That, that, that now focuses inward to a person and their mind and their heart and their beliefs. And I'm sorry, it's so much more difficult when you have to give out to everyone else what's really on your mind, what's really on your heart. It can be frightening. Because now you're exposing who you are. And sometimes it's not that we're afraid that other people will know who we are. It's we're afraid that we will find out who we are. And we're afraid that we won't like that answer. Jesus asks that. He turns a question. It causes everyone listening to reflect. And it's Peter that speaks up and says, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. What would have your answer been if you were there? Would, would you have been that bold and direct? Would you have answered, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. Or would you have agreed with what other people were saying? Yeah, probably one of the prophets, I'm guessing. Would you have pleaded ignorance and claimed open-mindedness and said, Jesus, you know, I, I don't know, but... I trust in you, I believe in you, I, I love you even. How about you just tell me who you are and I will just go ahead and, and adopt that? Or would you have been like Peter and ready to say out loud without hesitation, without worry of judgment, you are the son of the living God. Now because Peter had such a great confession doesn't make everybody else who didn't speak that way wrong. It shows that Peter had a great sense of what he believed, and it shows that in spiritual maturity, he was a little farther along than some other people. And that's okay. We're all in different places. It's okay to be in a different place, but what we have to know is where we're going. We should all know what we believe, why we believe it, why we do the things we do, and not be afraid or ashamed to share that with anyone. 
but we're not necessarily all there yet either. It has to start with knowing how God has designed us to function within the church. And that's being willing to take inventory of your spiritual life and seeking guidance and advice and training from literally dozens of our brothers and sisters here who would truly be happy and excited to hear anyone ask them to help you grow spiritually. 2 Peter 3.18 says, Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Philippians 1.6 and I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the end of, <clears throat> I'm sorry, bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. 1 Peter 1, 5 through 8. For this very reason, make sure every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours, and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take this week coming up and dedicate it to learning more about your spiritual identity and strengths and goals. And let us know what you find out and ask us for any help that we can offer to guide you. Have a great week.